So we have a new study that came out uh, about a week ago. I want you to take a look at this. This is in The Hill. A research study involving 90 participants determined that MDMA, commonly known as ecstasy or molly, when paired with talk therapy, can help those suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, the New York Times reported Monday. The study, which was obtained by the Times and has not yet been published, determined that two months after treatment, 67% of participants who received MDMA did not qualify for PTSD diagnosis anymore, compared with 32% who did not take the drug. That's a huge difference, guys. The research is expected to be published in Nature Medicine later this month and moves MDMA closer to getting Food and Drug Administration authorization for therapeutic use. The FDA would need to analyze other Phase 3 trial uh, showing the benefit of MDMA-assisted therapy for PTSD with approval coming at the earliest in 2023. So, interestingly enough, they go on to say that when you remove the talk therapy, it's not nearly as effective. But when you do the MDMA with the talk therapy, it's phenomenally effective. I will say I'm very surprised by that, actually. I would have guessed that MDMA on its own would uh, be powerful enough to fight back against PTSD and be powerful enough to defeat anxiety, depression, and a bunch of other psychological ailments. Um, but apparently I'm wrong. Apparently the empirical research shows you need talk therapy with it. Um, but either way, this is incredible. And... You know, at the same time that I'm happy that this is happening, I feel like this shit should have been happening decades ago. Like, how did we not all agree and come to this conclusion decades ago? How did you not run the studies decades ago? And the answer is because we have a very puritanical culture that cracks down on substances. And that certainly was the case even more in the past. It's changing now. But, I mean, really, guys, it's 2021 and we're seriously still having the conversation as to whether or not certain drugs can help. Of course drugs can help. There's a reason why people do them. Now, listen, don't get it twisted. Are there some people that have genuine addiction problems? Of course there, of course there are. But as Dr. Carl Hart tells us, it's only about 20% of drug users who are addicted to almost any of the drugs. So in other words, 80% of drug users are moderate users. And that honestly, that includes drugs like heroin and cocaine. And I know you hear that in your mind when you're like, what are you talking? That's insane, Kyle. It's not, because that's what the data shows. That's what the evidence shows. That 80% of people are moderate users of various substances. Now, are there some that by their very nature are too dangerous? Yes, but usually that has to do with what they're cut with. You know, so, you know, for example, crystal meth is cut with, like, gasoline and a bunch of other shit that's terrible for you. Crocodile has stuff in it that melts off your fucking skin. Like... I'm not saying all drugs are okay or healthy, but there is usually a version of various drugs, whether it's an upper or a downer or a psychedelic, that's a relatively safe version of that drug, which is totally fine to take, and 80% of the people who use it would be moderate users. So I'm talking more from a recreational perspective right now, and I think people, as a matter of a right, should be able to put in their body whatever they want to put in their body if they're not hurting anybody else. You should legalize, tax, and regulate all these various drugs. But what we're learning here is this. People have been idiots to sleep on the therapeutic effects of various substances. They've been idiots to deny that. Of course, you can have these powerful breakthroughs and life-changing perspectives from doing certain hallucinogenic drugs. Of course you can. People have been saying that forever. Have you ever talked to a hippie who, exper who experimented with these drugs? They'll tell you that. But now it's like science is just coming along to it. Like, oh, wow, would you look at that? Turns out MDMA has some phenomenal results in beating back PTSD or anxiety or depression or whatever it may be. And there are going to be more and more and more of these studies coming out. There's going to be more and more of them where people are going to realize, oh, this actually works. And I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, like Carl Hart said the other day, when we interviewed him on Crystal Kyle and Fred, you should check that out, by the way, on any podcast platform you go to. Or if you're, you know, you could um, pay $5 a month, become a member, get all the Crystal and Kyle and Friends videos. But anyway, I digress from that. Dr. Carl Hart tells us even things like opioid pills serve as good antidepressants. There's a lot of evidence of that. And again, that's not something you're allowed to say. It's, it's viewed as insane, but it's what the evidence shows. I don't know what you want me to tell you. And so I'm not at all surprised by these results, but a lot of people are. And so just wait and see. You're going to find that a lot of the drugs that people have been using recreationally for all these years, there are phenomenal upsides to it, which again is why people were using them. For the 20% that have real addiction problems, this is not for them. 
and they need rehab and they need help. It shouldn't be criminalized. They need rehab and they need help. But for the 80%, they can have it recreationally. And for some percentage, it is incredibly therapeutic and it helps in a variety of ways. So keep that in mind, man. Keep that in mind. And we're going to see more and more of these studies coming out. Just wait and see.